What's the good word, y'all? DKB here. So PFF, um, they were going through a list of players that they expect can get a contract extension with their teams done. And Center Conor McGovern popped up for us. So what they're predicting is a three, another three-year deal, $25.5 million, uh, essentially about $8.5 million per year. $15.5 million of that is going to be guaranteed. Much like the first time we dished out a contract to Conor McGovern, this essentially put him in the realm of just outside or just inside the top 10 of uh, centers being compensated, uh, which will be interesting. I, I don't think any of us will say he's a, a top 10-ish center or necessarily close to it. He's definitely middle tier in some of the rankings you'll see on like PFF and uh, other guys that want to you know, have some kind of stacked ranking or essentially say the same, but... Things could get so much more worse for us at the center position with some of the line play that I've seen from around the league. So the biggest thing is what is going to be Joe Douglas's and, you know, John Benton, Robert Sala's evaluation of Conor McGovern. Uh, if we truly believe he's kind of a middle of the pack, um, he definitely saw, falls somewhere in between just above average and maybe just below average. Um, it's a very small, you know, variation one way or the other. And that goes into the the issue with Conor McGovern. We haven't seen uh, much consistency in his performances. 2020, when we brought him on, keep in mind he was coming off of one of his best years as a Denver Bronco. He had the worst performance that we would have seen over the last 20 years. And, you know, this is not hyperbole. We're talking about a team that's gone from Kevin Mawai to Nick Mangold, and then we had to play a little bit of musical chairs with bringing on Connor McGovern, and then having, uh, during some injury spouts, having to rotate a few other centers in. So 2020 ended up being a, tr a terribly, um, <laughs> terribly terrible year for Connor McGovern. Um, 2021, we seen the bounce back in the guy that we were expecting we were going to get from day one. So it was nice to see it, and literally that season um, kind of secured his role in 2022 for himself. We thought it was something he could build on, or at least that would kind of become his floor. That wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, Connor McGovern, to me, if I had to put um, like a, a quoted summary on it for his, for you know how his performances have been, uh, it's very much so you know two steps forward, one step back. We see stretches of. Uh, I don't want to say elite, but uh, strong play from him, uh, getting a push on the pocket. He's even able to kind of elevate Lakin Tomlinson and Nate Herbig um, at certain points this season. We've seen a pretty good combo with him and AVT. Um, and then he's able to hold his own in pass protection. But then we also see the stretches where he's being bullied, used and abused, uh, multiple run stuffs. We have guys just kind of blowing right past him or strong arming him back into the quarterback. Um, and you know, you have to, uh, you can't even take it with a grain of salt. You have to be a little bit concerned and confused and it doesn't seem like it's a technique issue, but it's not quite an age concern either. Um, or, or at least when it comes to te technique, not necessarily hand usage. Um, it just is kind of, uh, the unlucky luck of the draw with some of the, the nose tackles and DTs that he's going to be rolling up against. Um, and, and it's generally a youth movement on the defensive line, right? It's not often he's going to be seeing a Fletcher Cox or somebody up there like that, where, you know, at least, um, you can kind of play battle of the ages, but, there's been a lot of good with Conor McGovern. If we want to start off with his durability, he's missed, uh, you know, three games the last two years. Um, 2020 was a bit of an anomaly for him, but only missed three games. Um, he was 18th in snaps in 2021 taken at the center position. This year, he's sixth. Um, it looks like he can crack that top five spot. We're also talking about during those stretches, you know, a couple weeks ago, he had a run blocking grade of 78.7. Um, and, and he was uh, he was one of the highest graded centers um, and generally offensive linemen for a portion there in terms of a, a positive run blocking grade uh, at the rate that he was doing it. I think it was somewhere around like 15.3%. All those numbers don't really mean a whole lot, but it makes a lot of sense when you take a look at our season. Uh, I think it was like week seven to 11 when we were on a hot stretch and we were winning, you know, four of uh, uh, five games or something like that. Um, we were seeing our offensive line really take off and he was the force to initiate that. But we were seeing, um, you know, uh, Michael Carter have solid games, Ty Johnson being able to break off a couple big runs. 
bam, night emerging. Um, there was definitely uh, um, uh, more of an uh, uh, satisfactory offense rolling out, but definitely uh, above average run performances that was happening. And uh, he was definitely a critical piece of that. There was also an interesting article I came across from X Factor, um, and I'll put it in the description for you guys. But Michael Nani had actually credit McGovern with being our best run blocker this season. And this is pretty up to date. I don't think it factored the Seahawks game, but there's not going to be a huge sway one way or the other. He was by far our best run blocker on the season as a whole. Nate Herbick was next up, but it wasn't even close. So um, check that out. It's definitely a good read. Um, but there is a lot to like to him uh, in terms of that. The the opposite of it, and maybe these are more of key factors for people, though, um, there are some penalty concerns with Conor McGovern. So the thing that was irritating to me is it's very hard if you're not actually breaking down film to evaluate an offensive line when it comes to just looking at numbers and stats, and there's not really a whole lot of general access to these numbers. Uh, I've seen a few different places that try to track them, and the penalty tracker has been different for all of them, but... Um, if we want to go based off what like ESPN uh, is showing us, he had three penalties in 2021, which tied him for 25th. And then this year so far, he's had four penalties, which is tied him for 18th. Not extremely crazy, um, but some of the penalties, a lot of it is holding um, and, and some false starts and things. And it, that sticks out in terms of the false starts because... We already feel like we have a discipline issue on the team as a whole. And uh, we've seen the offensive line stagnate a lot of, you know, solid looking drives where we've started off in a good position. We could have been, you know, in a uh, second and two situation and we got a false start or a holding and we've had to drop back um, to a long distance situation, which didn't work out in our favor. And then the other piece of it, which is a significant part, is. He has been somebody that has allowed a lot of sacks, a lot of pressures, and it's, kind of, it's come in spurts, um, but it's been somewhat of a consistency throughout um, the seasons as well. So 2021, four sacks allowed, which tied him for third. This season, he's allowed for uh, five sacks, and he's again tied for third. So um, it, it hasn't been good in that department whatsoever. I think that's a lot of the reason why Joe Douglas was continuing to go to the free agent pipeline and seeing if he can draw in uh, a Ryan Jensen, somebody that has a little bit more uh, ferocity, I would say, um, and a little bit more security in terms of his overall skill set in both the pass and run blocking game. But uh, honestly, right now it's a toss up. I do want to go to the draft. I do want to get somebody young again so that we can go back to, you know, having somebody locked down the middle of the line for 10, 12 uh, 15 years and we not really have to worry about much as opposed to renting out Conor McGovern again for, you know, what essentially be a two-year contract if Joe Douglas uh, sets it up the way he has every other contract for the most part. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a toss-up. I think either way, if we sign McGovern and we got a draft pick, great. Maybe that's the best of both worlds. Um, but if we don't end up, you know, signing him, he feels like uh, he's worth more. Keep in mind, this is a little bit of a pay cut for him, right? Um, he was averaging nine million a year uh, on his original contract, twenty-seven million over three years. He might not want to take a pay cut. Uh, maybe he feels like he contribute can contribute to a better team, or somebody else is willing to toss him a bigger bag. Um, and again, he's on the wrong side of thirty, so he's going to be looking to try to capture as much money as he can. Um, but if we can secure him, I think it would be nice. Right now, you can probably really only say we have one position on the offensive line locked down, and it's still a big if just because of the injury concerns. Elijah Vera Tucker is going to be our most proficient blocker when he returns, and uh, assuming that he's 100% healthy. Second, I would have to say is Makai Becton. Um, again, we're going to have to assume that he's uh, going to be healthy, but we've seen him in the building He's been putting in work almost since he uh, had the surgery. I think it was like two weeks right after they said. Um, and then Max Mitchell looks like our next best option. But literally, best case scenario, that's only three guys on our line. And we're still talking about a lot of depth questions. Um, what's going to happen with Lakin Tomlinson? What's going to happen at the right guard spot? And then again, some of the depth there. So uh, a lot of questions that we have to answer. This might be the best option to at least take some concerns off early in terms of kind of 
somewhat knowing who we're going to have holding down the center spot. Um, but my biggest issue with bringing back Conor McGovern would be as the guy that's supposed to initiate the communication across the line. We really shouldn't see as many false starts as we're seeing. We really shouldn't see as much issues handling stunts um, and, and different things of that nature that are coming up on our line. And that is solely on Conor McGovern, in my opinion. But irregardless, uh, we could definitely do a lot worse. Uh, I was you know, talking about this with Green Bean. Uh, it seems like if you know by the time you're 28 or so as an offensive lineman, if you haven't had it figured it out, uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, you probably aren't going to. And so there's not a lot of guys left in the league when we're talking about vets um, that you can go out and just plug and play these days and see, uh, you know, um, the success that I would say you're probably looking for. Um, and so a full youth movement to continue the trend of what we've seen just across the board. I think is honestly what needs to happen with this line and let a bunch of young guys, you know, mesh together and try to figure it out and, you know, sprinkle in Lakin Tomlinson, uh, sprinkle in, you know, Dwayne Brown, if he sticks around for whatever reason, or Dan Feeney, whoever it happens to be. Um, but uh, we definitely need some wholesale changes on the line. But either way, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, would you definitely bring um, Conor McGovern back or do you feel like we need to just cut ties and see what our next best option is. I'll catch you guys again. Peace.